So what I'm doing at the moment is cutting out a frame to replace this section here on the linear actuator design that I've been working on. Um, I've had some trouble whenever I've built this of lining up the motor correctly, uh, the motor shaft with the threaded rod. Um, there seems to be quite a lot of play in the position of the motor when I'm using these aluminium spacers and bolts and I suspect that's partly because this is acrylic rather than aluminium uh, so obviously it's softer there'll be it won't kind of maintain the direction of the bolts anywhere near as well as the aluminium part would um, but also these are these parts are something that I've had to buy um, custom made um, so and form a kind of frame to bolt the motor onto that should let you line it up exactly where it needs to be and then tighten the bolts down. I'm cutting the part out of my laser cutter which I hacked to accept G-code by um, placing the electronics with an Arduino. I'm sending the G-code from my computer using a program called Prontoface um, and I actually converted the SketchUp file that you can see there into G-code using my own program, using my own SketchUp plugin. Um, there are videos about that earlier on in my channel if you're interested. I'm going to talk a bit more about the tab design that I used for this part in a later video. There's several things I used in this design like nut traps and tabs um, and kind of customizing the edges for a laser cutter which I'll talk about in my next video. So this is quite exciting, this is the most complex part that I've designed and cut on this uh, laser cutter so far. So it'll be interesting to see how well it's together. Ah, it's probably fine. <laughs> so these things here are nut traps, so the bolts will hopefully, 4mm bolts will come through the side of the piece that fits on here and hold it all together. So that's all fitting together pretty nicely. I just forgot to put that piece in. Very nice. That's pretty much exactly how it looked in SketchUp. And so the 4mm bolts will come through these holes. There'll be nuts trapped here and the whole thing will just bolt together. And obviously the motor fits in that hole there, bolted on at the four corners. Whereas at the moment, on normal open builds, it's only bolted on at the two bottom corners. And this is far more solid. I have to countersink all of the four millimeter holes on the outside surface of the piece to stop the bolt heads protruding especially on the part of the piece which is going to directly contact the aluminium extrusion otherwise it won't fit together properly. That's the piece there, it's important to make sure that the bolt heads are totally flush or beneath the surface of that acrylic piece. This is to show you how the nut traps fit together. The reason I use these is because they're potentially stronger than uh, solvent cement, especially with the sort of joints that I can cut on the laser cutter and the, the other advantage is that obviously they come apart again so if you need to take one of these sheets off to assemble something etc it's obviously impossible to do that if they're cemented together but that seems to be really nice right angle a really sturdy joint I haven't bothered showing you myself screwing in all those bolts but here I'm finishing the back piece that is the motor mount and the sides um, it seems to be really sturdy and uh, certainly got true right angles so I'm really happy with that bit. I'm going to glue together the two layers of the part which is most similar to the original open builds end plates. This is the part which would actually attach to the C-beam and hold the bearing 
for the threaded rod to come through. I'm bolting it together temporarily and just making sure that all the holes and edges are lined up perfectly so that when I brush on the solvent cement it's going to set perfectly. Once that's set I'm going to remove those bolts and move on to the next stage of the build. I'm going to countersink one of the bolt holes going into the C-beam with a 13mm drill bit. This is so that the bolt head is flush with that piece of acrylic so that the end stop circuit board will fit in without hitting onto the bolt head. Now I'm going to tap the holes for the end stop bolts with an M3 tap. I'm going to remove the old motor mounts now um, with those kind of spindly aluminium spacers there. You can see how wobbly the whole thing is. Well, you can see the back of my head there. But you can see how wobbly the motor mount is just when I'm starting to unscrew it. I think the size of the motors that I'm using here combined with the fact that of course the parts are only made of acrylic and therefore quite soft means that the, the open build design is just not beefy enough for the sort of machine I'm building. The bolts that I'm fitting into the new style M plate here are the ones which are going to attach it to the C-beam and those need to go in first because once the motor mount is fitted there won't be enough room to slot them in although there will be enough room to screw them hopefully. Next come the bolts which will attach the end plate to the motor mount. Um, obviously those need to all be fully tightened before you attach the whole thing to the C-beam because the heads of the bolts will actually be facing the C-beam. Like I said, these need to have been countersunk so that they're totally beneath the surface of the acrylic otherwise the whole piece won't screw onto the C-beam properly. Now I'm going to fit in the 688ZZ bearing. It should just clip into place if the tolerance of the part is good enough. Um, and then I'm going to screw the whole piece onto the C-beam. Now this was an awkward step because it was impossible to get the screwdriver straight onto any of the bolts that uh, I was screwing in. This is because I didn't actually leave any access holes to insert the screwdriver through. Um, this wasn't entirely a mistake on my part. I think that it's, it's better for strength if the part doesn't have too many holes cut through it. Uh, however, I might look at changing the design a bit in future. But in the end, I did get it on without stripping any of the thread out of the holes in the C-beam, which did worry me a bit. I had to be very careful not to force any of the bolts in. Next I'm going to secure the 8mm shaft coupler onto the threaded rod using those grub screws. This is a RepRap version 1 Opto end stop, although I'm sure others will fit. I'm screwing that in with a M3 by 10mm bolt. And last but not least, here's the motor. Um, this is kind of the stage that explains exactly why I designed this motor mount in the first place. What I can do with this plate, because it's a full mounting plate, you can just uh, feel the way that the motor's sitting and make sure that it's directly centered on the coupler and the threaded rod before you go ahead and tighten up those bolts. Next I'm going to line up the grub screw on the coupler with the flat on the motor shafts and tighten that up. You can see that it'll turn with absolutely no wobble visible on the coupler. Whereas with the other design there was always a visible wobble, no matter how hard I tried to get everything lined up correctly. There's the open build style design that I built last week. You can see that it's not quite straight. Whereas mine is certainly sturdier, you could almost pick up the linear actuator by the motor. Whereas if you tried that with the other design, it would probably just snap off. Um, so I'm quite happy with this. I, I hope that was interesting for you as well. Do check out my next video, which is going to go over some of the design principles I used in making that part. Um, if you found this interesting, please like, uh, subscribe and keep checking back for more because I will eventually finish this CNC router and the whole process will be documented here. Thanks for watching and goodbye.